This is literally the best electric car range test I've ever seen. And without a doubt, the best winter electric car range test ever done in the history of electric vehicles. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Boy, this is such an exciting read. I spent, I don't know, two hours reading through this article. Two hours, you're thinking, why would it take you two hours to read an article? Well, it's got a bunch of links to every single car on the reviews they did for every car. Interestingly, this is really the best reviews I've seen for Chinese electric cars as well, alongside when compared to, directly compared to their competition from Tesla, from European car manufacturers, from Volkswagen, from South Korean manufacturers, from Kia, from Hyundai, from Skoda, BMW, Audi, Xpeng, Neo, BYD, Polestar, Cupra, Porsche, you name it. The vehicle is in this test. Now, yeah, there's lots of Chinese EVs that are not in it, but there's a few that are. And those include some of the most interesting electric cars, which are probably going to be available, well, wherever you are. Europe, Australia, the US, within the next couple of years. Why? Well, because the brands that are selling them have said that they will be, and obviously they're already selling right now in Norway. Now, did you know this? The second best selling Chinese car in Norway right now is the BYD Tang. The reason being, it's actually the only seven seat SUV you can buy in Norway, the only one unless you want to buy a van. And apparently the vans are not that great. The reviews I read for the vans from all different brands, including Mercedes and others, they said they're, they're pretty good, but they're not as good as the BYD Tang if you want a seven seat vehicle. In fact, the review for the BYD Tang was unbelievably glowing. I'm going to share it with you in a minute. I was, I was just sort of shocked. I'm like reading, it's so great. It's so great. It's in all these different ways. They basically said the only problem it has is the brand. No one in noise ever heard of it except for those of you watching the electric Viking, of course. Now here were the winners of this test. Not really fair to say winners and losers because they're all different cars. I mean, different cars, different prices, etc., etc. But it is interesting to see that Tesla still reigns when it comes to efficiency. They clearly have had the best efficiency in these tests. Now motor.no, which is Norway's premium motor magazine, motoring publication, They've been testing these electric cars every year now for a while, whatever's available, they test it. And there's obviously, you know, more cars available there than any other European country anywhere in the world, except, you know, maybe China has more EVs. Well, for sure they do. But other than that, outside of China, this is the best country to test them in. These guys really know what they're doing. They tested these cars in freezing conditions, in snow, driving on snow, roads covered in snow, and incredibly, you know, there was no one saying these cars can't be driven in the winter. That's what the media wants you to believe. The media wants you to think, oh, no, 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 electric cars don't work in the winter. Well, these guys said, no, it was no problem. In fact, the range, right? The range, for example, on a Tesla Model 3 was only 15% lower in these freezing temperatures than Tesla's actual quoted range, their actual WLTP quoted range. It was only 15% less. Unbelievable. You know, all these people online, saying, oh, Tesla's Rangers are bogus. Well, to be honest, this is the second test, the second major test now that I've seen in Norway from two different publications who say that's actually wrong. So yeah. Now the car with the closest range that it achieved compared to its WLTP list was the Porsche Taycan 4 Cross Turismo. Now, realistically for the price, the range is abysmal. It's terrible. It's the worst in this test by a million miles. But I mean, the, well, the reason for that is efficiency is horrendous. It's 22.4 kilowatt hour, right? 22.4, 22.4. That is so bad that it's the worst on this test. And the thing is, it's nowhere near the biggest car. But, you know, Porsche's quoted figures for the WT LTP range is very conservative. So it actually came in within 11% only 11% down on its quoted numbers. So that was the worst vehicle in test. But actually, I lie. I tell a lie because BYD's tank actually just beat it on the line. Just beat it. It beat it because its number, its quoted number, 
was only 11% down. Now, BOD quotes that you're going to get about 450 kilometers of range, and it did just over 400, meaning it was only 11% down from its quoted WLTP range. Interestingly, right, this BOD vehicle uses a lithium ion phosphate battery, which clearly worked very, very well in these really cold temperatures. The other thing I noticed was that the Tesla Model 3 with the LFP battery pack had the same exact efficiency number as the Tesla Model 3 with their lithium ternary pack, you know, with their standard battery pack that comes in every vehicle that's not the standard range. So people are saying, right, that the lithium ion phosphate batteries should be less efficient in the cold, but it looks like they're actually not. In fact, if anything, that vehicle potentially was more efficient because actually those batteries are heavier. So clearly the winner, well, subjectively the winner in this test with the most range, that's not subjective, that's objective. The most range by far was the Tesla Model 3, the long range. That's the dual engine model. That did 521 kilometers under this difficult testing in these cold conditions, which is 15% down on the quota WLTP. But seriously, 521 kilometers in these kinds of conditions, it really does break the myth, right? The myth, this whole myth that EVs don't work well in extreme cold temperatures. Well, this one proved that, you know, almost all of these cars worked really, really well in cold temperatures and none of them even actually had any significant problems. I mean, the worst one range was down compared to the quoted WLTP number by only 25%, but most of them were somewhere between 11 and 17% on average. Now, the most range for the next EV was the Mercedes-Benz EQS 580 4Matic. Mercedes quotes the range WLTP of 645 kilometers. In the tests, it did 513. People have been saying a lot of positive things about the Mercedes-Benz EQS, especially in like blog forums and quotes that I've seen. Personally, I think it's a joke. I think if you're going to pay $200,000 for a car and it gives you less range than a Model 3, but it's not really that much bigger on the inside. I mean, it's a little bit bigger, but it's still a sedan. Can't carry much more luggage. Still got a boot that's not pretty small boot. They're not a big car like the BYD Tang 7-seater, right? I mean, you're paying, in Australia, these things cost like $270,000. That's just like for 500 kilometers of range, but it doesn't seem fair. Like to me, I would have thought if you're going to pay, you know, what's that? Nearly five times more than the Model 3, right? That you'd get more range, but instead you get less. Instead, in fact, the quoted range was actually missed by 20.5%. So Mercedes quotes 645 kilometers. It did 513. That means it was down by 20.5%. That means it handled cold temperatures much worse than the majority of the cars on these on this test. So you would think, right, that a vehicle being manufactured in Germany, being positioned as a super luxury car, would handle the cold better than the other cars on this test. But in fact, it handled them worse. Uh, frankly, I'm pretty shocked. Now, in third place was the BMW iX xDrive 50. That's also a very expensive car. Pretty nice, though, and it's, you know, decent size. That's quoted range is 591, and it did 503. So it was off by 14.9%. Quoted range for that car is 507 kilometers. The distance it actually traveled on the test was 451, meaning it was down by 11%. So that one was actually pretty much equal with the BYD Tang for giving you the closest range compared to what Tesla actually quotes. Pretty impressive there as well. There's a there's a constant narrative on particularly the website Inside EVs, constant narrative. They claim there that the range of Tesla's vehicles is you'll never get anywhere near the range that Tesla quotes. Well, this article and other articles similar to this that I've seen on tests in Norway are basically saying the opposite to that. So I'm not sure really what we should believe here. People in forums who could be, I don't know, saying anything or people who are actually doing real tests showing you the real numbers and making videos about it. Yeah, seems more relevant to me. Now, interesting, the Tesla Model Y actually beat all of its competition. Next was the Volkswagen ID3 Pro S. That's one of the more expensive ID3 models. I think it's the most expensive model. That comes with standard 539 kilometers of range and it did 435 kilometers. So it was down by 19.3%. Next was the Kia EV6. Now that's probably a similar car in terms of interior space, a little bit smaller than the Tesla Model Y. 
that did 429 kilometers, so 22 kilometers less than the Model Y. Next was the Neo ES8, and I think this actually car did pretty well. It's a bit bigger than a Tesla Model Y. In fact, it's closer in size to the BYD tank. And that one did 425 kilometers of range. It was only 12.9% down on its claim of 488. Pretty impressive for the Neo ES8. Now that vehicle, when they reviewed this vehicle independently, they gave it an eight out of 10, which is a pretty good score. Now after that was the Kia EV6 four-wheel drive. That one did 423 kilometers. So it was only down in range by six kilometers versus the two-wheel drive. I don't know why that was. It's quite interesting because it's obviously quite a lot heavier carrying that extra motor. Then you've got the Volkswagen ID4 Pro, which did 414 kilometers, followed by the Ionic 5 two-wheel drive, which did 408 kilometers, so less range than its sister car, very similar car, the Kia EV6. Next was BMW i4 M50, 406 kilometers. Next was Skoda Enyaq, the iV80X, that did 403 kilometers. And then after that, the Porsche Taycan 4 Cross Turismo with 402 kilometers. But one point I should make is this, right? The BYD Tang has a new battery pack. It's been launched in China. So this model they tested here was the old model. The new model has about 150 kilometers more range. So maybe in the real world, 130 kilometers more range. However, that would have meant if they'd tested that model, it would have been up there in the top three easily. Now I believe from what I'm hearing, BYD will be replacing this model in Norway with this new model. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they perform now. Now let's have a quick look at how the BYD Tang has done in their test. Well, they talked about it. I read all the reviews for all the different cars. They were all interesting, but not as interesting as this one. That's why I wanted to share it with you because I think this will be the most affordable electric SUV seven seater car that anyone will be able to buy, whether that's Europe, Australia, whatever country you're in, pretty good chance that within the next few years, you'll be able to buy one. So it's worth actually finding out, are they good? Now, Motor said for their headline, this one only lacks one thing, a familiar name. Would we consider buying an unknown Chinese electric car for 650,000 kroner? Yes, actually. Now they go on to say, they say, there are two fundamental preconditions for such an assessment. You care nothing about prestige. You care a lot about space for family and luggage. So this vehicle actually comes with an 86.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, has 509 horsepower, 660 newton meters of torque, and it'll do zero to 100 kilometers an hour in only 4.6 seconds. So it's actually kind of like a, really more like a sports SUV. But like I said, the new model will have a much longer range, which has already been released in China. So what's the actual size? What's well, 4.9 meters long, 195 centimeters wide and 173 centimeters tall. Now, Motor says this, this vehicle has an interesting claim. It doesn't face any competition at all. It forms its very own class. It's alone in having four wheel drive and seven seats. There's no other EV on sale in Norway with that metric. Now there is since this review, there's another Chinese electric SUV, but it's more of a niche brand. They also said it's got one thing you don't need, a hell of a lot of power, but they said it in kind of a nice way, right? And then they go and say that if you want an alternative, the only option you have with seven seats and this kind of size of luggage is a van. Even when we remove the premise of the class's best space conditions and compare the other factors, they say this is a very, very good car for the money. There is no doubt that the Chinese are serious about their electric cars. Recently, we got to test drive the Neo ES8 for a few hours. And now we have had the BYD Tang for a very comprehensive test. A few weeks after the car was launched in Norway, the positive in car size, unless the need has changed significantly. Now I'll put a link in the description below to the full review. You can check it all out. However, I'll just leave this. It scored 10 out of 10 for equipment. This is what they said when they scored a 10 out of 10 for equipment. The reason they said it got 10 out of 10. It's an impressive package. Only metallic tow bar and winter wheels are extra. The foundation is in four wheel drive and seven seats. Then comes, for example, leather seats with cooling and heating, panoramic roof that can be opened, 22 inch wheels, and a wireless mobile charger. Amongst many other features, it has 31 different interior lighting colors. The next one they gave it 10 out of 10 for was practicality. They said seven seats with good luggage space, even with those seats in use, and you can even tow a trailer 
up to 1.5 ton in weight. That's actually the largest towing figure I've seen from any electric car anywhere worldwide. So this is pretty much the perfect electric car for me. I'm stoked because I think BYD Australia are going to bring them. Now, BYD Australia, I'm imagining you'll see this video at some point in time. So please let me know if you're going to be selling the Tang. I believe you are, but I want to know for sure. In fact, I'm going to get in contact with them, call them and find out. Now, what did you think of this range test? What were your thoughts? Do you agree with my thoughts? Like, Do you think that really the Porsche Taycan and the Mercedes-Benz EQS, which are both extremely expensive, like they're, you know, way, way, way more expensive than every other car in this test. They're in a completely different ballpark. Do you think it's reasonable to, for me to expect that they would have a better range than they do considering the price? Or am I just being unreasonable? Am I being a hater? Maybe I am. I don't know. But I actually like those cars. I just think, come on, I want more range. I want to see more range for the price. I want to see more bang for your buck. Maybe I'm being unfair. Let me know though. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.